the seven reasons women lose respect for men. Let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. This topic entered my mind recently as a result of all the things I've been seeing online or even uh, from my day-to-day -day life in different relationships between men and women. And I started thinking about the narratives that are pushed and the confusion that is put out there uh, to have the man and the woman in disagreement, uh, out of place, and disharmony. Man, from, from the recent, she's done a lot, but the recent comments from Jada Smith Pinkett on her 50th birthday, she made some comments, uh, or she made a comment about she wants to learn how to love. Um, it's like, wow, wow. After all these years of marriage, like, what, what are you really, what are you really telling this man, this man, Will Smith? After all these years, man, after you secured the bag, got two kids, you're established with them, now you want to learn how to love. Man, listen, Jada Pink, Jada Pinkett Smith is not as relevant as she is today if she's not with Will Smith. Come on, you know that. Uh, but, you know, I ain't mad at that. I just, I just, you know, prefer that she keep that to herself. And you know, she's she's been faking, she's been faking for years, man. She's letting you know, you know, at, at fifty, and and they've been married, you know, what twenty plus years, probably going on thirty years, and now she wants to learn how to love. Man, what what was she doing? What was she doing all those years? What was she giving him all those years? Man, what was Will Smith going through? Is, is a better question. And then I, I look at comments, certain comments uh, from uh, Gabrielle Union. Then a few years ago, about two years ago, uh, Beyonce's mother, Tina Knowles, she she just emasculated, man, her husband on national TV. Man, y'all go check that out. Man, just, just ripped him. And you gotta see his facial expressions, his eyes. She ripped his brother on national TV. Uh, not as bad as Robin Givens ripped Mike Tyson in front of Barbara Walters on national TV. But it was pretty bad. And, and then I look at uh, Derek Curry's wife, what she's doing recently, man, what she's done in the past, you know? Um, man, she even was national TV twerking on her son's college teammate on national TV in the stands. Uh, I look at Stephan's, you know, Steph Curry's wife and, and what she stated on social media about being jealous of his fame and the attention she, he gets and that she would like to get hit up in her DM. It's crazy, right? Uh, but it's not so crazy if you really understand uh, the mindset and the makeup of women and men. It's really not so crazy. Um, but hey man, this happens in my, in, in regular life, man, in, in your normal life, if you pay attention. And probably some of you are going through this yourselves. Uh, in my early years, you know, I experienced some things also. So I'm not really surprised, um, but I hate that people are so easily influenced by celebrities. And so uh, I wish celebrities would be more responsible about what they put out there. Because man, a lot of these women, most of these women go and flow with whatever, you know, their favorite celebrities are saying, either consciously or, or subconsciously, they go with it. So I, I just wish more responsibility uh, was put on uh, uh, the front or, or be the primary uh, motivation behind some of these public statements. 
but it is what it is. Now, when I thought of this topic, the seven reasons why women lose respect for men, um, I thought about the song Respect, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Now, a lot of us know Aretha Franklin for singing it, and she made it a hit back in 67. But the original, the original performer was Otis Redding. And he is the writer of that song. He came out with it in 65. He is the writer and the original performer. Now, when Aretha got to it, she rearranged some lyrics, right? Uh, and I think she rearranged some lyrics in an attempt to, to reestablish what gender roles should be, what they should define and what they are. And so she, she switched up some lyrics. Now, if you read Otis Redden's lyrics on respect, you know, it's, uh, it's clear that he's telling this young lady, like, I really don't care, you know, what you got going on outside the house. I just want respect, you know, when you get home. Just treat me good when you get home. Uh, he makes it in first in the first verse he says, You want it, you got it. All right? You need it, you got it. Some would say that's tricking. Uh whatever the case, but it's clear this is his woman, but you can still be a trick and, and be in a relationship, a monogamous relationship, you can still trick, uh, but there's clearly a trade-off. He wants respect and he knows she wants the finer things in life. That's how she views love and he views love as, man, just don't take my dignity, treat me well, don't embarrass me, don't take my dignity. Don't cut off my balls. That's respect. And that's love to him. Women don't view it that way. And uh, we, we view love and respect in different ways, as we should. But to know that is to be empowered and to be enlightened. Now, Aretha rearranged some lyrics to put the woman in a position of power to make her a so-called alpha, even though I don't believe in the such thing as an alpha female. Uh, but she tried to rearrange gender roles when she rearranged these lyrics. But if you read these lyrics, they don't even sound right. They don't sound appropriate. They don't sound realistic. That, you know, uh, a woman would gladly give up her money. You know, a woman would gladly take care of a man and all she wants is respect. That don't even sound right. You know, but it had a nice hook, a nice a, a, a nice chorus and hook, a nice bridge, uh, nice music, beat. But people aren't really paying attention to the lyrics. If you really read the lyrics, it's clear that this is an ultra masculine woman or this is a man, but definitely a man wrote these lyrics she just rearranged a few things. Um, but, you know, people can try to rearrange gender roles all they want, but it doesn't feel right. It's not going to look right. It's not going to sound right when you really dive deeply into it. Now, any woman that proudly, proudly gives up her money to a man, we know what we call that type of relationship. You know, that's illegal in most countries and most states we know what that is now any man that proudly uh gives up his money to his woman uh and take care of his woman and, and buys her the finer things society calls that man a provider women would call him a great man a good man a real man switch the roles they're gonna call that woman a fool a prostitute they're going to call him a pimp, lazy, sorry. So we can, you know, do like I said, do all we want uh, 
as a society to try to flip gender roles. But it is what it is. And, and, and these, these concrete roles, these, these roles uh, that are meant to be, that are natural, are always going to be here. No, no matter how badly people try to flip the roles. The seven reasons why women lose respect for men. Number one, being bossy or alpha around her, but submissive around other men. Bro, this is a huge one. Listen, man, you can't, you can't uh, try to be alpha and aggressive and assertive or even bossy, although, you know, alpha and bossy are not the same thing. There's a way to communicate as an alpha man without being bossy. Uh, but you can't do those things to your woman. But when you get outside the house, you get around other men or other alpha men, real alpha men, uh, or strong men, and you become submissive. Man, that's the quickest way to lose her respect. That's the quick. That's the quickest way to get a tongue lashing, a tongue whipping from her, because you're a fraud. You've been faking the funk. You've been exposed about who you really are. See, you can pretend to be one thing in the house, but when you're with your woman and you guys go around your family, your family, your, your friends, old and new, or just other men, strangers, or people you have a rapport with, your true self, your true identity will show up. It has to, it will. It'll show up. You're either going to become submissive or you're going to remain the same as you were at the house around her. And it was just you two or you two and the kids. Um, she'll lose respect for you right off the bat. And what's crazy, man, she will stay with you. I've seen it. I've seen it, man. I've seen it in guys. She will stay with you and uh, not respect you. That's one of the quickest ways to lose respect. And brothers, your woman is always watching you. Always, man. She wants to see how you interact with other men. She's watching. She she's wants to see if they respect you. And if they respect you, they're going to respect anything attached to you. They're going to respect your woman. They're going to respect your kids. They're going to respect your house, your space. So she wants to see how you respond around other men. Now, um, lady, that, that comes with your relationship with, with your manager at your job, All right? On the street, guys, at, on the street. Guys at the convenience store, guys at the grocery store, guys at the pool hall, at the bar, at the club, at the church. In any environment, she's watching and she's listening. And that's going to determine if she respects you or loses respect for you. Now, there's a, there's a bit of a twist uh, as a black man being in a white system or European system. She's watching those interactions also. She's, she's watching how you interact with white men white man of power, the white police officer, the white DA, the white judge, the white manager. You know, she's, she's reacting and, and watching, listening to all of this. And it's going to show up who you really are. My, my wife, man, she's watched me in every situation. Uh, she's watched me, you know, check white officers. She's watched me represent myself in court with a white judge presiding and a white DA coming at me. Uh, she's watched me around other black men 
uh, strong man, alpha man, in different environments. Man, I, I don't change. I don't change, man. I'm the same way. Um, I'm a man of peace. And I've come to be a man of peace because I've also been a man of violence. So I know what true peace looks like and I know what true violence looks like. So she, she knows me in my natural state as being a man of peace and a man of reason, a man of uh, logic, but she's also witnessed me turn it up when needed to, um, when was necessary. And you gotta be able to do that, brothers. You have to be, be able to turn it up when it's time to turn it up. Now you can't be over emotional and overreact, but when it's appropriate, you gotta be able to go from zero to 100. You got to, man, to, to keep that, that respect in place intact. But you also have to be able to represent yourself verbally. You know, and you can't just resort to violence or aggression when the situation doesn't call for that. It just calls for you properly articulating your thoughts. And if you can't see that, man, she's, she's going to see you as a monkey. When you can't articulate your thoughts, you're overreacting, getting over emotional with, with uh, other men. You know, but you, you were one way at the house. You were logical at the house. Right? You're a grand wizard at the house, but when you're challenged intellectually outside the house by other men, you fold. Can't happen, man. You got to always stay prepared. Stay ready. Number two, being too suspicious and protective, also known as being jealous. Man, listen, man. She going to do what she going to do. Right? You can't keep tabs on her. You can't stalk her, follow her, go through her purse, go through her phone. You can't do all that. She's going to do what she's going to do. You got to be confident in who you are. And she got to know that you are confident in you and that, you know, that, that it's an unspoken understanding that she could be replaced, that you could get another one. I said unspoken. Yeah, unspoken. It has to be an unspoken understanding that, hey, man, they, they didn't stop making them when they made you. You know? You got to be confident. Not overconfident. Not 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 uh, an a-hole when, you know, when it's not appropriate. But it just has to be understood that you know you, you are a prize. You are the prize. And, uh, you bring a lot to the table. Actually, you bring the whole table. That has to be understood. And when you know that, when you know that, and she knows that, you won't deal with certain things, right? People are extra suspicious and, and, and extra too protective and jealous because of insecurity. Insecurity. I'm not saying don't be protective. I'm not saying have your head in the cloud. To not be mindful and aware. But I'm saying, don't be distracted by that stuff. Don't be over over oversensitive, overprotective. Be secure and confident in you. And she becomes a reflection of that. Number three, hiding from your true potential as a man. Brother, this is a tough one, man, because uh I know as a man, you want to provide security. You want to provide security. You want to know where your next meal is coming, that the bills are going to get paid, the car note is going to get paid, you're going to have food in the fridge. You want that sense of security. You want to provide that. And that's a noble thing. That's a good thing to do. But you got to take chances. You got to take chances. You got to take risk to tap into and reach your full potential as a man. And 
I'm gonna tell you what's worse. If you're not confident in your true potential or you don't see it, but she sees it. She sees that you could be so much further along and she appreciates the security you bring, but she's like, as a family, as a community, as a couple, we can have so much more. We can conquer so much more. We can affect so many more lives. If you step out on faith and do what you're truly called to do, to exercise your God-given gifts and talents, man, when she sees that and she sees that you don't have the confidence, the confidence in yourself to do that, she's going to lose respect. She's going to lose respect, man. She might even have sympathy for you, but, man, you don't want sympathy. You don't want that. But she's going to lose some respect. And she's going to be looking in her side eye at men, from her side eye at men that, uh, that take those chances, take, take those risks. This is what it's all about, man. Uh, calculated risk. Take those chances, brothers. Number four, whining about life like a victim brothers I, i've been through a lot the last uh what's eased up the last two years two 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 three years i've been it's been really good but uh before that for about five six years man i was going through a lot custody battles um man uh in a, a criminal case uh from, from an allegation that was dropped uh, just thrown out. But, you know, that's life, man. You're going to go through things. What separates the weak from the strong is how they handle those things, their perspective, how they deal with those things that they face in life. You're either going to have the mentality in the perspective of a victim or a victor. I choose to always have the respect of, the perspective of a victor. And uh, not complain, face stuff head on, always show up to battle, to fight. Uh, yeah, and, and they're watching. Like I said, man, your wife, your spouse is watching you. She's watching how you respond. She's watching. Man, you can even have a weak moment, man, where you, where you may shed a tear too. Uh, a weak moment where you may speak. Uh, in a uh, defeating, speak from a defeating perspective, you may have those moments, a moment, but you got to snap back out of it. Got to snap out of that and remember who you are, that you're a victor, not a victim. And for the most part, you got to be consistent with that. She's watching. But if you're acting like a victim, if you're reacting emotionally, from the things that you're that are facing you, that energy reflects off of your woman, off of your family, your household. Man, you gotta set the standard. You get you gotta lay the foundation of what your your marriage is, what your relationship is, what your family is. You gotta lay that foundation. Whether you guys are victims or victors. Bottom line. Number five. Verbally beating her down in front of others. Not a good thing, man. Um, you don't want to verbally uh, beat your woman down at all, whether it's front of, in front of others or at the house. You know, it comes a time where you may have to check that ego. Um, periodically, you got to check that ego, bring her down a peg, a step. Uh, that happens, man. That, that's That's... That's one of the, uh, the biggest foes, the challenges for, for a woman is their ego. I know a lot of men think, it, a lot of people think it's the man's ego, but really it's the woman's ego. That's the biggest challenge. Uh, men are forced to check their ego often. Just dealing with other men, we're forced to check our ego. And that doesn't mean we're scared or fearful, anything like that. It's just a, a respect we got to have amongst each other. For, uh, for furniture not being moved around, bones breaking, eyes getting black, people dying. So that's just the unspoken respect we got to have for one another as men. Um, 
It's very rare for women to check their egos with other women. Very rare. So a lot of times they don't even deal with each other. They avoid each other. Or, you know, it, it gets uh, it gets crazy. It can get crazy. So, yeah, man, it comes a time you may have to check that ego, bring it down, get her balance, you know, recalibrate her. But, uh, you know, never beat your woman down, you know. Never beat her down and uh, take her spirit. You know, you got to have her her spirit healthy, her mindset healthy, because uh, she's a reflection of you. Man, you're only strong as the weakest link. And when I say weakest link, I'm not uh, speaking negatively or derogatory, derogatory towards the woman. But uh, when it comes to emotion, emotion versus logic, emotion, you know, is weaker than logic. You know, emotion and emotional intelligence are not the same. Now, emotional intelligence trumps logic, but just emotion versus logic, logic prevails. And so that's why I say, you know, the, the woman is the, the weaker vessel. And so it never beat her down, man. You, you got a, a woman that uh, that's stable mentally, emotionally, spiritually. You, you got something special there. You want to keep that intact. But, man, that comes with work. It comes with being aware, being mindful, uh, and keeping things established, keeping things in check, man. But, but never do that man, in front of people. Man, that's going to not only bring her down, you're going to lose respect from her, and you're going to lose respect for other, from other people when you do that. I'm telling you, you're going to lose respect from other people. You may think it's a player. You may think it's macho. But, man, never do that. There's nothing player about, you know, uh, doing that in public like that. Because what you do, you start to set a precedent. And she starts to have out, uh, outbreaks or, 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 or temper tantrums, what have you, in public. Because why? She's a reflection of you. She's mimicking you. Period. Number six, always letting her win. Man, I know it's been pushed for years. Happy wife, happy life. Man, that's BS. That's BS, man. Happy husband, happy life. That's how, that's how it is, man. Happy husband, happy life. Listen, there's some relationships. <clears throat> there's a lot of relationships where the wife is happy. She's getting everything she wants. She's winning any any argument or, or confrontation or disagreement but the whole house is in a mess and the, and the man is, is uh is miserable right but i can show you every time every time the man is happy the woman is happy because again the woman is reflection of the man. I'm telling you, she's a reflection of him. She's a reflection of him, man. So if he's happy, she's going to be happy. It trickles down. I've never seen a happy man in a marriage and an unhappy wife. Never. But I've seen some happy wives and some unhappy husbands. Because we'll hold things in, we'll bottle things in, we'll take it on the chin, we won't complain, we're letting her win, have her way. But, but, but the whole time, you're dying inside. You're losing yourself. You're losing her respect. She's just walking over you. So, no, nah, man, letting her win all the time? No. Now, I don't believe in, in, in engaging in disagreement and arguments with the woman constantly. You know? I don't believe that either. So, uh, and I want to say it has to be a good balance. Either. With, with letting her win and not letting her win. But anytime you do engage with a woman in disagreement, uh, you prevail through logic. Like I said before, logic trumps emotion. However, 
Emotional intelligence trumps logic. There's a difference between emotional intelligence and emotion. So most women are gonna lead in debate or argument or disagreement with emotion. You stay calm, you stay solid, you stay ordered, and you lead through logic. That's how you prevail. Now, she's trying to uh, continue to argue and debate logic. Man, you got a fool on your hands. And so, you know, you got some decisions to make. Number seven, taking her love, respect, and attraction for you for granted. Brothers, man, if you got someone that's been down for you, man, saw you at some weak moments, saw you face the odds and win, saw you take risk and go against all odds and, and then play it safe, and you went for tapping into your higher self and exercising your God-given gifts and talents, you got a woman that's been down and supported you and encouraged you and said, baby, you can do that. You told her your dreams, you told her your goals, your, your, your ambitions, your aspirations. And she said, yeah, yeah, you can do that, baby. I believe in you. Man, you can't take that for granted. Because although there are a bunch of women that come a dime a dozen, but to have one that truly will give you those words of affirmation, those words of encouragement, those words of affection, and just truly believe in you and trust you and follow you and listen and be submissive or cooperative, those do not come a dime a dozen. So you gotta show your appreciation for, the, for that woman and don't take it for granted. And you gotta, you gotta reward her in her love language. You know, um, check that out. I got a video that uh, Yaya and myself made years ago, maybe two, three years ago, check that out or do some do your own research about love languages. But she got she got to be rewarded. And that's how she knows she's not being taken for granted because you're rewarding her in her love language. And a lot of times it's going to be through travel or restaurants or, um, or, or a bag or some money. You know, a bracelet, a necklace, some shoes, a new car, a new house, upgrade, um, you know, different things like that. It's, it's most likely it's going to be some money attached to it. But that is what it is, man. That's the trade-off, you know. That's the trade-off for her loyalty and, and dedication and stand down. That's the trade-off. You know, all we want is for her to be cooperative, to listen, be cooperative, follow, have faith, encourage. That's what we want. And so that's the trade off with us. So if she's doing that, hey man, you gotta reward that. Don't take that for granted. She will lose respect for you if you take that for granted. And, and that's another way for her to tap out, man. So, you know, show your woman appreciation, man, when she's when she's held it down for you. Uh because a lot of women are not going to hold it down like that. All right? So, hey, man, let me know what you think. The seven reasons why women lose respect for men. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, from me to you, love. Peace.